Father. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your anointing. We give you the highest praise. And God, I pray the blessing of God upon the word of the Lord. I decrease so you increase. I sit down so you stand up. And you get all the glory. Let the word of God go forth with power, anointing, and authority. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Be set in your ward. Be set in your station. That is the apostolic word for us in this season. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 21 verse 8. Amen. Make sure you have your notebooks out. Bibles out. We are going to take notes. Amen. Isaiah chapter 21 verse 8. Amen. Praise the Lord. Cell phones on silent. Your notepads on your cell phone is okay. You want to take notes down, but no other things on the cell phone. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. I want you to take down these scriptures. Take down today's word because this is going to prepare you for the prophetic word that was released prior before the word. All right, Isaiah chapter 21, verse 8. And the Bible says, And the watchman cried like a lion, O oh Lord! The watchman cried like a lion and said, O oh Lord, I stand continually on the watchtower. In the daytime, and I am set in my station every night. I am set in my ward every night. Isaiah the prophet says, And the watchman cried like a lion, O oh Lord, I stand continually on the watchtower in the daytime and I am set in my station, my ward in the evening time or every night. Tell your neighbor, be set in your ward and station continually. Daytime, morning Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. And the Bible says be well balanced. Tell your neighbor be well balanced. Be well balanced, <laughs> be well balanced means, means for you to be a temperate and it means for you to be sober minded. sober-minded. And then it says, be vigilant. So number one, you must be well-balanced. Number two, be vigilant. That came in the prophetic word this morning, right? That we have to be vigilant. And then it says, cautious at all times. Number three, you must be cautious at all are we all understanding this? This is so important, people of God. Young people, listen to the word of the Lord. Number one, you must be well balanced. Number two, you must be vigilant. Number three, you must be cautious at all times. At all times. Not when you feel like, not when you want to, or not only when there's a problem. The Bible says at all Right? Praise God. For the enemy of yours, the devil, listen to this, roams around like a, like a lion roaring in first anger. Like a lion. He's doing what? Like a lion. What he's doing? He's roaring in what? Fierce hunger. Fierce hunger. What is the enemy wanting to do? He wants to intimidate you. He wants to roar so loud over your life that he intimidates you, that he scares you. He puts you in a place where you are scared. You're in a place of fear. You're in a place of panic. You're in a place of anxiety. That's what the enemy wants to do. He is roaring like a lion with fierce hunger. 
What does he want to do? He wants to devour you. He wants to devour your marriage. He wants to devour your children. He wants to devour your purpose, your assignment, your destiny. The devil wants to devour you. Are you listening to this, Jerry? That's what he wants to do. The Bible says in John 10 verse 10, for the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus has come that you might have life and have life in abundance. And so we see what the enemy is assigned to do is to bring destruction. Be, listen to me. What the enemy will do, he will distract you to derail you, to destroy you, to bring destruction. That's what the Bible says again, that we must be what? Cautious at all times. That we must be what? Vigilant. Be vigilant. Be alert. We cannot fall off to sleep. We must be alert in the spirit. In our prayer time. In our nighttime prayer. In our intercessory prayer. We got to be praying with the prayer without ceasing. The enemy is not the lion of the tribe of Judah. God is. Amen. Amen. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But he's, he's rolls around like a roaring lion in fierce hunger to do what? To intimidate you. To intimidate you. The only roadmap the enemy has is the roadmap to your mind. To do what? To, give, to, to bring about mental harassment to you. That's what the enemy does. He wants to arrest you mentally. So the only roadmap the enemy has is the roadmap to your mind. And so he attacks your mind. The battlefield for the enemy is your mind. The enemy will attack your mind. He will attack your mind to, to, to twist. To twist the truth and make the truth look as lies and make lies look as truth. But we don't want a truth. We want the truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ. The truth is his word. So what the enemy does, he, he begins to roll, he begins to roll fierce hunger like a roaring lion to do what? To, to attack you, to, get, to, to mentally harass you. That's what he does. You know what he wants to do? He wants to mentally harass you. You know what? I, he, he wants to bring it to a point where he sees you break down. He wants to break you down. He wants to break you down until you feel that, that, that everything is out of you. You feel like life is out of you. Why? Because that's the assignment of the enemy is to break you down, to bring you to a point where you are worn out. Is this related to someone? That's what he wants to do. But the Bible says, Psalm as David says in Psalms 34, he says, many of the afflictions, verse 19, many of the afflictions of the righteous. But God shall deliver you out of all your afflictions to the righteous. God will deliver you out of all these afflictions. The enemy roams around like a rolling lion in death hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. The enemy wants to seize upon you. He will only seize upon you when you are not vigilant, when you are not well balanced, when you are not alert, when you are not cautious. He will seize upon you. And that's why he will use things and people to distract you so that he can seize upon you. In other words, take a hold of you. To bring you under his control. Because 
the assignment of the enemy is not to bless you, but to kill, steal, and destroy you. To devour you. To devour you. And so the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. The Bible says, don't be ignorant of, the, of Satan's devices, wiles, and intentions. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices, intentions, and wiles. Wiles simply means mind games of the devil because the devil plays mind games with you. Come on, somebody. That's what he does. That's what wild means. Okay? All right? It means the only roadmap the enemy has is the roadmap to your mind and what he wants to do is play mind games upon with you so that he can, he can mentally arrest you. That's why it is so important according to the, uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 2. The Bible says don't be conformed to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the key for you is to renew your mind according to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. For this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate upon it day and night. The key for you is daily renewal of the mind by you being in meditation and memorization of the scriptures. So that you can stand in a position as an overcomer. And then your way shall be prosperous. And you shall have good success. Because you will know what to do according to what is written in the word of God. Because you walk in obedience to God in his word. Be set in your word. In your word. Be set in your word. Be set in your station. The word be. Be it simply means it is a command. So it is a command to the church today to what? To be. It is a command for you to be and for you to be with. Set in your war. Set in your station. Isaiah the prophet said, I stood continually on the watchtower in the daytime. And he said, I am set in my station every night. He said, I am set. 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 Things are going to come your way. But when you stand on the word of God and you stand on the promises of God and you stand knowing that the kingdom of God is inside of you, the kingdom of God is immovable, unshakable, hallelujah. And when you stand on the word of God and you stand in your authority in Christ, you will stand in a set position. Your position of authority, your position of power, no matter what the enemy throws at you, the Bible said that no weapon from the against you shall prosper. What shall separate you from the love of God? Be able to separate you from the love of God. Why? Because your mind is set on things above. Yes, the attacks will come. Yes, the sufferings will come. But you don't set your mind on that. You set your mind on God. You set your mind on the word of God. You set your eyes on God. He says, I'm setting my watch every night. I don't know what my times you might face, family of God, but I challenge you in the midst of your night time. Keep watch, keep watch, keep set in your watch. In your midnight hour, in your dark hour. Family of God, in the place of you to be setting your watch, you gotta put on the whole armor of God. You've got to put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and verse 13. You can read verse 11, verse 12, verse 13, right? Put on God's complete armor that you may be able to successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. You must put on the whole armor of God, the complete armor of God, the spiritual armor. Why? So that you can be able to stand up against all the strategies of the devil. Are we all understanding this? Let me be able to also stand up all the deceits of the enemy because the enemy is very deceitful. And that's why you've got to be careful not to open the door to the spirit of deception. Because the enemy wants to deceive you and that is the spirit of deception. Instead of you following the 
truth, you're following a truth. Because a truth sounds good. A truth feels good. But the truth is going to chastise you. It's going to correct you. It's going to rebuke you. And it's going to bring you to a place where you lie posture on the altar and say, Father, I repent, forgive me, help me, bring me out of this, bring me through this, work on me, deal with me. That's what the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ will do. That's why the Bible says when the apostle Peter spoke the word of God in Acts chapter 2 to the people that crucified Jesus, they, they stood up and they said, what must we do to be saved? Because the word the apostle Peter preached, the Bible says he pricked their hearts. That is the gospel that we ought to be preaching. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth, the good news. That word must prick people's hearts. Challenge them. Desire to change. To bring them to a place of repentance. To turn away from their wicked ways. Turn away from abomination. Turn away from evilness. Turn away from the things that don't signify or glorify or honor God. And turn and return. on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand up against all the strategies, not some the Bible says all, all, all all the strategies all the deceits of the devil and the Bible says and you will also be able to resist the devil amen, in your watchtower in your ward why are you allowing the devil to play with you in your ward why are you allowing the enemy to play with you in your station? Because sometimes the enemy can play mind games with you to manipulate you and say, okay, you're not worthy to stand in this ward. You're not worthy to be in this ward because of this and because of that, because why? He wants you, he wants you, he wants to spiritually harass you. You're all going to encounter spiritual opposition in your watchtower. You are going to encounter spiritual resistance. And that's why it's important for you to know, number one, who you are. Know who you are as a person and know who you are in God. Know your position in Christ that you are a son of the most high God. That you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Number two, know who you are. Very important that you are to know that you belong to God. That you are God's property. You are not a nobody, you are a somebody. So you've got to know who you are in Him. And number three, you've got to know who lives on the inside of you. The Bible says, great is he that is in you, that he that's in the world. You've got to know who's inside of you. Are we all understanding this? Are we all understanding this? All right. So you'll be able to do what? When you put on the whole armor of God, you'll be able to do what? Be able to resist the enemy. That means we don't fight the devil. Call oh, fighting the devil. No, you're not fighting the devil because the devil is a defeat. No. Come on, somebody. All right, so we do what? We resist it. What we do? All right, let me show you James 4 verse 7. The Bible says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's what it says. Submit to God's authority. And so it's very important for you to stand firm. If you want to stand firm, be sit in your watch. I don't know where you're sitting up your watch. Maybe you make a room in your home. That can be a place where, you, where it becomes your watchtower. I don't know where you set up your watchtower. But you can set up your watchtower in your heart in the spirit, knowing who you are in the spirit, where you play in the spirit at all times. Pray in tongues at all times. Amen. Praise God. So, so this is very, very important, people of God. In the midst of you to stand firm in your watchtower. You want to be set in your tower? You want to be set in your what? Let me tell you, it requires you to submit to God's authority. Submit to God's plan. Submit to God's authority. Submit to God's ways. Submit to God's purpose. Number two, then it says resist the devil. That means, resist means, it means to stand firm against him. What does resist mean? Come and say it louder. What does it mean? Stand firm against him. Okay, so what we do, we stand firm against him. We stand firm against him by being steadfast in the Lord. We stand firm against him by being full of the word of God. We stand firm against him by being full of the Holy Spirit. We stand firm against 
tested by you being clothed with the whole armor of God. We stand firm against it by you being in total submission to the authority of God. I'm just giving you keys how to stand firm against the enemy. And then it says that the enemy will flee from you. The word that means flee there, it simply means that the enemy will run in terror from you. He says the enemy will what? Run in terror from you. Why will the enemy run in terror from you? Because he saw, number one, you submitted to God's authority. Number two, you're full with the whole armor of God. Number three, you're full with the Holy Spirit. Number four, you're full with the word of God. Number five, you stand fast in your faith in the Lord, knowing who you are, whose you are, and who lives on the inside of you, knowing that you're the son of the most high God. You are a kingdom ambassador. You are a kingdom citizen. Are you understanding this, people of God? The Bible says, will run in terror from you. You will be able to resist the enemy when you put on the armor of God and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. The watchman is able to perceive when danger is and when danger is coming, the watchmen blow the trumpet. They sound the alarm to alert the nation, to alert their community that the danger is approaching. Warfare is about to happen. You heard the prophetic word this morning. As a watchman of the high tower, I sound the alarm to warn you. And that's what the Bible says in Revelation 2 verse 29. Let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. You can run into the church building. Let me tell you, the church building is not going to save you. Hello, somebody. All right. So you are able to stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands, you will be able to stand firmly in your place. Be set in your ward. Be set in your station. You'll be able to stand firmly in your place. Stand firmly in your position. Listen to me. If you don't know what to do in your position at work, that's when people take advantage of your position. Because you are not standing in your position. That's the truth. And when management don't see you standing in the position or executing your responsibility in the position that they've assigned to you, then they move you and place somebody else in that position. Why, Lord? Why am I going through the 
this? Why me? I'm righteous. Why me? I'm boxed in. Why me? I'm dry. The Bible says we're going to be what? Flesh on every side. We are pressed on every side. In other words, we are troubled, oppressed in every way, but we will not be kept, but we will not be crushed. We will suffer embarrassment and are perplexed and are unable to find a way out, but we will not be driven to the top place of despair. The attacks that we're going to encounter, they are still, there are apostolic sufferings we're going to go through, suffering for righteousness sake. When you stand, as a watchman, when you stand, be setting your word as a watchman. What you are standing for? Truth? What you are standing for? Righteousness? What are you standing for? Fairness? What are you standing for? Holiness? What are you standing for? The justice of God. Come on, somebody. This is what we are standing for. God in principle. God's order. God's standard. God's Values. Oh, hallelujah. And as a watchman, I'm not going to allow error to come in. I'm not going to allow a demon of doctrines to come in and invade this territory. So I stand as a watchman to warn you, to make known to you, to, to, to connect the error and to reveal and bring present truth to you so that you are rooted and grounded in No honor, no honor, it's just a mess. 
but you're happy and you're celebrating and you're clapping your hands until something happens and then you that were clapping and laughing and talking now you're fighting each other now the hurt is coming out because now the comments are coming the statements are coming everything is coming out because why you are Lord is leading me. You have not dealt with others of issues. Now you think you're down to them because why are you sitting together in the wrong places doing the wrong thing? You think you're bringing peace, but there's no peace. As long as Jezebel is present, there's no peace. As long as Ahab is present, there's no peace. You've got to identify the spirit and the demon of Jezebel. And you've got to listen to me that Jezebel's spirit works with Ahab. Ahab is a weak man. You've got to be You gotta be armed and strong in the Lord. You don't need weak people in your life. You cannot be a weakling standing in the forefront because God is not going to use weakling people in the front. It's time for you to get out of the place that you had in a self pity party, worrying about yourself that nobody loves you. You've been so caught up with money, the love of money, your job, and everything else in the world, but no God, no holiness, no righteousness. You are not walking. happy with the blessings and the prosperity of what prophets and, and people are saying that, that you bless and you prophesy and you do this and I prophesy you do that and I prophesy we so worried about bubblegum messages that hype you up and traumatize you and then you make wrong decisions and wrong choices why because you chose to run off the things that we call things that is contrary to the word of God because you are gullible You're not hungry for holiness. Come and pray. No, I'm tired. Come. Let's study the word. No, I'm tired. Come. Let's, let's have all to go. No, I'm tired. But you are not tired to be on Netflix. You are not tired to be on WhatsApp. You are not tired to be on Instagram. You are not tired of watching your movies and your series. But when it comes to the things of God, you are tired. You are lazy. You are weak. You're tired. And your friends come. Let's go out. You're not tired. That time. You're going out. And then in the night, when you're sleeping, demons are unleashed. Demons are having a call with you. Then, my God, my God, because you're in the wrong places at the wrong time. And you open wrong doors you're not supposed to open. And now they torment you in your dreams. They torment you in your visions. They torment you in your sleep. You've given them access to coming. And if they can't get you, they get to the one that's closest to you. Let me tell you, don't be a falling asleep. You've got to be vigilant. You've got to watch and pray. The hour when Jesus shall return, the Bible says, Watch and pray, watch and pray. Stop watching too much TV, watch in the spirit, watch in the spirit, and pray without ceasing. Because if the enemy can attack a marriage, he can attack a family, and if he can attack a family, he can attack. And if he can attack a community, he can attack a society. And if he can attack a society, he can attack a nation. That's why the enemy goes for the foundation. Because if he can get the foundation, the building will collapse. Come on, somebody, this is the Lord speaking. If you can get the foundation, your building will collapse. That's what the Bible says. If anyone hears the word of God and does not live according to the word or acts out the word or applies, the word is a man that puts his house upon the sand. That when the storms come, your, your, your house will be washed away. But a man who hears the word of God and who walks in the word of God and who applies the word of God is a man that puts his house upon the rock. The rock is Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. The Bible says the same stone. The book is rejected, became the chief cornerstone. And when you build your life on the chief cornerstone, when storms will come, we will be hard placed. We will be pushed to and fro, but we will not be crushed. We will not be clapped. We will not be driven to despair. The Bible says we are persecuted, but we are not deserted. We will not stand alone. We are struck down to the ground, but we are never struck out. We are never destroyed. So I will be is a place sometimes in my life where I will be struck down. Where I God, I'm overwhelmed. God, I can't do it. God, I can't make it. God, when and how? And you're in a place of where you're struck down. But it's 
in that place, if you've got nothing else to say, say, God, keep me. God, keep me in this place. I'm telling you, God will keep you in that place. You might be struck down, but you are not struck out. It's not over. God is not finished with you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. God has an assignment for your life. You've got the work to do. You've got much to do. God has not brought you thus far to live you. Stop whining and complaining and cussing and fighting. Shut up. You have work to do. Because you can't say you're speaking from the Holy 
Holy Spirit inside of you when you are speaking gossiping and scandaling and judging and criticizing people, family, your leadership. Come on, somebody. That's not the Holy Spirit. You are speaking from another spirit. Don't come and tell me you're speaking from the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, ouch. Ouch. Thousand a month, and you can only pay five thousand. Be well balanced. 
Instead of having to move out balance. Yeah. In your thinking. And manage your finances. Manage your affairs. Fire plan. Godly principles. Not Google. Google is not God. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to this people of God? This is serious what I'm saying to you. Because the youngsters, and even some adults today, no, you tell them, no, God, no, I'm going to go to Google, and I'm going to hear what Google has to say. No, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Gone are the days when you would speak as an adult, and the children would just have to shut up. And listen, now it's back chatting, now it's kicking the tongues, now it's stepping the feet, now it's banging the door, now it's all I don't want to eat. Now you become so tired and weak and worried now because they don't want to eat. You don't want to eat, you don't <laughs> If you don't eat, you're going to get hungry, you're going to stay in the cup in the night. And then you're going to eat. You're going to eat. You're going to eat. Get your house in order. Sort out. 
out your affairs, sort out your paperwork, sort out these things. I'm telling you these things, people of God. What I'm saying to you is serious. No, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And it comes a time when you can't do it because you're not allowed. Then what legacy have you left behind for your children? You were the one that was preaching, jumping, clapping, driving a nice car, driving, living in a house, nice house. You had all these wonderful things. But what legacy you left behind that you left your children or your family in a place of desolation, disarray, discomfort, disunity, unorganized because of your poor management, no balance, no morals, no values, no kingdom. Verse 41. And then it says, This is what Jesus says. He says, All of you must keep awake. He says, What? He doesn't say sleep. It says, Do what? That means give strict attention. Be cautious. Then we read in 1 Peter 5. It says, Be cautious at all times. And then it says, And active. And watch and pray that you may not come into temptation. The Spirit indeed is. Willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. Jesus took them with him and they fell out to sleep and he said to them, can you not tell him with me for one hour to pray? Come, let's pray. How can you pray and there's a child sleeping? <laughs> Some adults even sleep. Luke 
21, 36. Luke 21, 36. And the Bible says, keep away then. Jesus says, keep away then and watch at all times. Watch at? All times. Watch at? All times. Watch at? All times. That's right. At all times. Even when you sleep with the spiritual warfare going on in the night when you're sleeping, do you know that? Yes. That's why you see God will wake up some people at midnight to pray. God will wake up people at 3 o'clock to pray. God will wake up people at 5 o'clock to pray. You got to be attentive when God tells you to wake up and pray. I'm tired. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is well. You see, the flesh will always give rise even though you say, Oh, you're tired. Go back to sleep. Don't worry. Oh, you're this. Don't worry. Oh, you're this. But God is actually waking you up to warn you of something to come. God was actually waking up to go into the closet and pray for so and so because danger was coming for that person. And even if you might not hear the testimony, but you are obedient to God and God is the one who rewards you for your obedience. Sometimes you will hear the testimony when you were there, three o'clock in the morning, and this is what happened to me. And God gave you the vision of the dream about that person. Maybe Mrs. Apple, for example. Are you understanding this? And Mrs. Apple comes in your message, oh, dear God, this is what happened. And you stand and say, thank you, Lord. I obeyed your voice. Even if they don't know that I prayed, but you know that I prayed. Let me tell you, it is a privilege and an honor that God woke you up to pray. It had nothing to do about you. It had more to do about God. At all times. Keep away then. Watch at all times. Be discreet. Be discreet. Don't let everyone know your business. Be discreet. Be discreet. If you put in what you're having for supper every day on WhatsApp, don't dare ask me to do that on WhatsApp. It's not your business. <laughs> I'm just using that as an example you got to be what? Discreet. you got to be discreet in the spirit where the enemy cannot detect you. you got to be discreet even in your everyday life. Not letting people know about your business. Church. 
Amen? Amen. 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 And that goes with your leadership. Don't expect that. Be sent in your watch. Because the enemy can delay you. The enemy can distract you because he wants to destroy you. Luke 21, 36. Let's complete that. Keep awake then. Watch at all times. Be discreet, attentive. Attentively, we must be attentive to the Spirit of God. What is God saying all the time? God, what are you saying? Oh, no. Why is this happening to me? Why? Why? Why me? Why me? Why me? No, God, what are you saying? God, what are you revealing to me? God, what do you want to show me? God, show me areas that maybe I'm walking in disobedience. Show me. Reveal it to me. Help me. Are you understanding this, church? Okay. All right. Amen. 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 Pray that you may have the full strength and ability to be counted worthy to escape all these things. Take it together that will take place and to stand in the presence of the Son of Man. To be accounted worthy to escape all these things. Take it together that will take place. The prophecy was spoken before the meeting. There are things that is coming. That must take place so that you can be able to escape those things. And I'm giving you the word of the Lord in the beginning, right? So the Bible says we must do what, church? Watch and pray. Watch at all times, pray without ceasing. Watch at all times, pray without ceasing. Watch at all times, pray without ceasing, right? Right? So we need to be awake and God all our uh, waking hours. Every time that you up. You need to God every second, every minute, every hour. Right? Right? So that we can see when sin is at the door, desiring to entrap us. Ephesians 4 verse 27. Ephesians 4 verse 27. The Bible says, Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. So you must give the enemy no foothold to come into your life. You see, you're giving the enemy no foothold to come into your life, but you're allowing him to come into your children. Through certain acts, movies, programs, music, people. The Bible says give no foothold for the devil to come in. Who's responsible for that? It's you and myself. You gotta be set in your watch. Amen? Amen? Amen. The believer must diligently work to keep the devil from having an opportunity or an advantage. It is also your responsibility not to allow sin to have dominion over you. Romans chapter 6, verse 12, right? Listen to this. The outline of Isaiah 21, verse 8. Let's go back. And the watchman cried like a lion, O Lord, I stand continually on the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my station every night. The outline of this people of God is this. The prophet Isaiah was set in his word and in his station. Number one, you must be set in your word and your station. You know that when you turn the station on, if you listen to the radio, and it's not on the right station, there is going to be distortion, right? You're not going to hear the, the, the station properly, am I right? But when you sit on the correct station, you will be able to hear clearly, am I right? There will be no distortion. That's why you've got to be sitting in your station in the Spirit of God so that you can hear by the Spirit of God what God is saying. You will hear accurately so that you can respond correctly to your life situation, your life circumstances, your life issues. Does everyone understand? Right? Number two. The word sit means to station. Isaiah the prophet said that he was set in his station, right? So the word set means to station and it means a pillar from the Hebrew word natsab. N-A-T-S-A-B. So it means pillar. So you stand as a pillar. Amen? Amen? If there's no pillars to uphold the building, will the building stand? Will the bullies 
that. Right. So we um, sense the ward. I'm going to close with this. Sense the ward is a means of defense and protection. So the ward, you got to be sitting your ward. Your ward is a means of what? Defense and a protection. That's what it means. God is our protector. Us as children of God, we set up a watchtower in God. The Bible says he's our tower. Right? He's our high tower. He's our safety. He's the one that protects us. He's the one that defends us. He's the one that fights our battles. He's the one that vindicates us. So we got to be set in his high tower. Don't forget that, please. we got to be set in whose high tower? And then you must also be set in your high tower in the realm of the spirit and in the natural. That means in your workplace, your workstation, your working environment, your position, your schooling environment, your home, your road, your neighborhood, your continent, your business, in the marketplace, you must be set in your world. Know your purpose, know your assignment. Alright, don't be confused because God is not the author of confusion, right? Since a ward is a means of defense and protection. And a ward is the root word for warden. So you are a warden. Amen? Amen? Praise God. And since a warden is a person who guards or has charge of something, I am an apostolic warden for you. Are you listening to this? They are apostolic wardens. Alright? They are prophetic wardens. Are you getting this church? Amen? Praise God. You are a warden in your territory. You cannot not allow the enemy to come in and invade your home and your family and your marriage and your finances and your children. Come on. Come on, people of God. You want to stand as a warden. Stand for truth and righteousness. Stand for fearless. And watch God do wonderful things in your life. People of God, be spiritual wardens. Be spiritual wardens. Two points and I'm done. Number one, you are assigned to a particular position. You can't just go to any position. If you're a supervisor, you can't go be a manager unless the manager gives you grace to operate in that position if they are not there. Or even if they're there and they allow you to do the work while they're there. You cannot take somebody else's position. But if you don't take your position, somebody else will take your position. If you don't take your position in your home, if you don't take territory in your home, you're allowing the enemy access to come and take territory in your home. Apostolic people are, are assigned to take territory. You are an apostolic people. So you are assigned to take territory. Are you listening to this? Yeah. Alright, you are assigned to a particular position. Amen. You got to know your position. So God, please reveal to me what is my position. What is my assignment? What is my purpose? What is my position? Amen. Don't go into a position that you're not graceful. Alright. Number two. You help God and protect the house of the Lord from the enemy. So it's my job to protect this house and to protect you from the enemy. That's right. As a spiritual warden. Amen. Are you understanding this church? Amen. Amen. Praise God. We are the spiritual wardens of this house, myself and my wife. Are you understanding this? And then you are the spiritual warden where you are. And you are spiritual wardens in this house. So we all work together. Amen. Amen. As soon as we have negativity, negativity, we shut the door. We don't entertain it and laugh and giggle. What are you doing? Laughing and giggling for something that don't even sound right. I always say this, that your character must line up with your voice. Your character must line up with your voice. If you say who you are, I'm going to check your character. And I'm also going to check your integrity. Amen? Amen? The main class knows that we're dealing with integrity right now. Amen? Integrity is important. 
character and integrity protects your life, protects your future, protects your assets. If you have a ministry, for example, it protects the ministry because it shows credibility. Amen? Amen? So be set in your walk. Be set in your station. You know, in the hospital, they have different wards, right? Nurses from this ward cannot go into the other ward and try and do the work there. They are stationed at this ward. If they're stationed at B ward, that's where they're stationed. And they know what needs to be done in B ward because they know what patients will come into B ward. Come on, somebody. That's where it says you must know your position so that you're not all over the place. Because when you're all over the place, that's where the enemy comes in and he places confusion. And when confusion comes, it's to destroy you. That's why some people were overwhelmed. This is for somebody. People were overwhelmed even in the workplace. They were overwhelmed. They were overwhelmed. Do this, do this, do that, do that, do this, do this. You know what they're doing? They want to put you in a place of confusion. 